Okay, here we are with a Howa 1500. This happens to be a uh, 243. Uh, we're going to work on the trigger a little bit. It comes from the factory. Or as far as I know, it's from the factory. It's a pretty nice trigger assembly. I like it. It's pretty simple to work on. Basically, all we have to do right now is uh, we're going to drop the hammer. And I've got this one. I've already done the trigger work on this one, but uh, I put close back to factory specs as it was, as I can remember, uh, just so we can demonstrate kind of what it takes to, to make a lighter trigger. Here's the safety. See how the safety works. Uh, got a lot of free trap, a lot of creep, a lot of creep before it breaks. And there it goes. So we're going to make that where it's a whole lot easier to do. But you don't have to take anything apart right now. That's just uh, before we take the trigger assembly off, pull this back, release the bolt. Let's get the bolt out of there. We're not going to need it right now. And then let's take this one screw. That's all that holds that trigger in there. And we'll set the barrel aside. Now, we have a trigger here. And from the factory, it's got these adjustments. If you want to see what's happening, there's a sight window right here. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it on this camera. Let me turn the light on. There you can kind of see the shear inside. If you'll pull down on this hammer, or whatever you want to call that, I'm going to call it that, you can see where it mates up with the top of the trigger. And in here, if you'll just pull the trigger, see it creeping and creeping and creeping? And then it breaks. And that's when the gun fires. See how much creep it's got? We're going to take that out of there. Now, if you want to go through it, what we can do, if you want to, if you want to do this, uh, the trigger assembly can come apart. Basically. The only part that you really need to work on, you see the part that's moving inside there when I pull the trigger? That part that's moving in there, that's where it meshes, that's where it mates up with this piece here. And when the bolt's in there and that piece falls, it lets the firing pin, the hammer fall and the spring hits the firing pin and off she goes. But you can take this trigger out. But in order to do that, before you take that trigger out, we got to take some other stuff apart. Behind this one is a spring. There's a spring behind this one. Uh, if you're going to do anything to any of the springs, this is the one you want to, uh, to, to modify. First off, we're going to take, I'm going to take this little E-clip out right here. You can see it's not holding the safety lever on. Be careful because them little E-clips like to take off. All right, that little E-clip fell off. There it is right there. So what we'll do now, I'm going to take that pin out the back side. There's another E-clip on the back side. We're just going to take the whole thing out. Take that pin out and then here's the trigger. The trigger's out. Now we didn't take everything apart that time. We will we'll have to take more stuff apart in order to put this back together I think. We'll just have to see. But you can see on top of here there's a shiny surface 
that's what I've polished. I just used, I think I used 1500 grit sandpaper and just polished that and you that's the part that you can see through that sight glass that goes in here. Or that sight window, it's not a glass. But you can see kind of where that was and how that mates up with it. Well all I did, you can take this piece out and polish that surface too but you have to have a punch and a hammer and drive these out and there's a spring under there I've had it out and it's not a big deal there's a spring under there and that provides the tension on this so you, you can take that spring out um, you don't really it's not necessary because when you polish this surface here it's, it's going to make a big difference it's hard for you to see all the way up in there, but that's a pretty smooth surface in there. Uh, it's really, a, a, as far as I'm concerned, it's a, it's a quality trigger for a factory trigger system anyway. Uh, I polish that uh, and, you know, pay attention there, there, it's at an angle. So, pay attention to that angle and you, and you can make, just make sure you what I did is I just put a thousand grit piece of sandpaper down and I ran it across it like that and polished that up. Other than that, that's really that's really all the metal work you need to do. Now, in order to put this back together, there's a spring under here, that's what I was talking about a while ago. That one onto the front. Just take this screw all the way out. There's a it's a threaded stud with a flathead slot in it with a jam nut around it. That's all it is. And notice this one that we're taking out now, how it's got a point on it. Remember that. And there's a spring. There it is. A little spring right there. Now this spring, what I did, is fully adjustable from the factory. But what I did, on this end here, I cut about a roll. I think I cut one round off of it. It's, there, it's going to be impossible to see on this camera. But I cut a, uh, I cut a round off of this spring just to shorten it a little bit. Now once you get that out, this, you can take this piece out, the safety, but you don't have to. There's a detent under it right there. You can see and then there's another hole over here for that detent. That's just for own safety and off of safety. That's all that is. Uh, see there it's on safety there it's off but all that pivots on the pin that, hold, that also lets the trigger pivot so yeah, I, I just leave it on there's no point in taking it off this screw on the back back here that's what controls your creep on your trigger and, and when we put it back together we're going to adjust it to where it's very minimal and like I said, that's from the factory. That's how this trigger is. It's, you know, it's a, it's a nice trigger. I, I like it. So when we put this trigger back in, it's, I mean, it's just basic reassemble. There's nothing really complicated about it. You got to line the holes up there. Take the clip, the pin. We had an E-clip still on one side. Put that on the bottom away from the safety. So go on in the side away from the safety. You have to wiggle the trigger a little bit to get the holes to line up. Well, I said it wasn't hard. <laughs> it's fishing to go, I can feel it. There it went. And then line the hole up for the safety. Push that pin all the way through. You see how we got the pin all the way through right here? And then, be very, very careful because this is a very small E clip. And I've already dropped it. Sure did. Nope, here it is right here. I thought I was going to turn the camera off and find this E clip. 
Okay, got the E-clip right back in place. So then we'll just take a screwdriver and pop it into place. You'll hear it snap. Now the safety is pivoting, everything's there. But there's, you'll notice there's no resistance on pulling the trigger. It's real sloppy and loose. That's because this spring is not in here. Now, like I said, I cut around off of this spring. And I'm not 100% sure that that was absolutely necessary. But I did. And that fact remains. So we put the spring in there. And we put the little pointed pin. And the pointed threaded stud. Goes in right behind it. And then it falls out. I think it's supposed to do that three or four times, evidently, because that's how it usually works out. And I believe it's going to fall out again. I'm going to try to keep from saying bad words here, but I'm not going to promise. Here we go. We're going to thread that in. You can thread it way in, all the way in, and I'm gonna, we're going to adjust it. That's the end pretty snug. The tighter you screw it in, the more tension you're going to have on this trigger. That's, that trigger's good and tight right now, and we don't want that. First thing we're going to adjust, let's, uh, let's back that tension off just a little bit. Now, there I went about a half a round. Now it's a lot lighter. Just from doing that, it triggers a whole lot lighter. And now we're going to control this creep. As you can see there, let me find it where you can see it. Yeah, see how much it's going? See how far that creep is? Too far. So what we're going to do, and you can actually physically watch that, watch in that side window, when I adjust this screw, you can actually watch that trigger See it moving as I turn this screw? Now it's pretty close right there. I think I might even have it too tight. We're going to back it up a little bit. And now I'm going to push down on this. And I'm going to stimulate that the gun is cocked. I'm going to stimulate it by pushing down on this. Down. And then, boom. The, the trigger is just barely moving. And it's real light. Polishing that surface in there made this a real crisp break. It breaks real crisp just from polishing that surface and, and when you get to the edge of it, make sure you file it, or not file it, but sand it down to where it's a real sharp point. Don't make that a, a rounded point. Make sure it's a real sharp point. That way when it gets there, boom, it breaks crisp. And that's what you want is a crisp break. You can adjust the, the creep. And if you're letting a little kid shoot this and, and you want to make it safe, add a little creep to it. That way, when they get on there, they you know they can. It's not so such a light trigger that the gun goes off before they're ready. You know, if you don't want to adjust the creep, you can come over to this one and adjust the tension. Make it a little harder. You know, if you're an experienced shooter and you're used to shooting with a light trigger, you know, then then go ahead. But for somebody, you know, if you need to, I see I just went in a, few, uh, a quarter round. Come back and simulate it again. I'm pulling, I'm having to actually put quite a bit of pressure on that trigger to get it to break. But it's, you know, a quarter of a turn makes quite a bit of difference. So we're going to back that up a little bit. And then you just, it's going to be hard for me to do this. Uh, and lock that jam nut down. We can lock that jam nut down right there. Make sure we lock the tension. Yeah. Yeah, it's light. It's good and light. And we don't have any creep. We got some creep, but we don't. It's just enough to. As soon as the trigger moves, it breaks. There's there's hardly any creep at all. You can kind of see there. It, there's just a little bit of creep. My light keeps turning off. And, and it's all adjustable. You can adjust it right here. And if you can't tell exactly what it feels like, that's when we, let's put it back on the gun. And then it'll, it'll start to feel a little more natural. So we put that back on there. There's that one screw. It's a very, very simple system here. 
until you do that. Here we are. Tighten your screw down. Tighten it down. I'm going to put the bolt in. Push it in. Close it. The gun is caught. There's safety. There's off safety. And then check your work. There's a lot of creep right there. It's more than it feels. You can feel more creep now than you could with holding it by hand. That's why I say put the bolt back in it and try it. There's a little bit of extra creep right there. Now I don't have my scale here, so I don't, there at the shop, I can't tell exactly what the trigger pull is. See, I'm pulling. It doesn't go far, but it has a little bit of a, little bit of creep. So what we're going to do, now that we've got it on the gun, what you do is just screw that in, and don't even go an eighth of a turn. Just probably right there. Just I mean, just enough to see it move. Raise it both up. You can just raise it both up, push it right back down to cock it, and then try it again. Oh yeah, that's much better. That's just about right, right there. Yeah, a very little creep. I don't know if you can see how far it creeps to, before it fires. See, there's no creep. As soon as the trigger actually moves, it fires, and that's what I want. It's a very, very crisp trigger. No creep. It's probably, I would guess that, I've weighed it before, before I did any of this stuff and moving it tonight, and I had it right at about 1.7 pounds. That's about what it is right now. Maybe, maybe, maybe a little lighter. It might be one and a half. That's nice. That's all there is to this trigger. You can always come back. You know, if you want to, like I said, if you want to add some tension, thread that, screw that in tighter. The one on the front of the trigger. You want more tension, screw it in tighter. You want more creep, back this one out. This one back here. If you want more creep, back it out. If you want less creep, screw it in. If you screw it in too far, you will know it because the gun won't stay cocked. So, it, it, the gun won't cock. You have to have, you got, this screw goes in and pushes on the back of the trigger and holds it under the shear. And if you back it off enough, that spring over here is gonna push it back and that there's nothing, the, the shear will never even, they won't ever even, the surfaces won't mate. But you can, you can see, that's a crisp trigger. Very crisp. I'd say it's about one and a half pounds. I'm just guessing it may be more or less than that, but it won't be by much. And after that, put it back on the gun and go shoot it. But the the, the trigger itself is very simple to work on. It, it may look complicated. You got the they they've, they've got the stuff on there that you know that says they've adjusted it from the factory, and they'll be able to tell if all that's been tampered with. But you know what? It's, it's made to adjust, so adjust it. You don't have to take this knee, this lever off, the one that releases the bolt. You don't have to take it off. Leave that screw in. You don't even need it off because there's another little bitty spring under there. If you take that off and not be careful, it'll jump out and then you're going to be hunting that spring. Snug everything up. Come back and lock your jam nuts down. Once you get your jam nuts set, everything like you like it, lock your jam nuts down, put it back on the gun, you're ready to go. Hope that helps.